Hello Arts 102, this is the communication unit and like I said this unit is um, kind of a day to learn and a lifetime to master. The terms are really easy and you shouldn't have a problem on the test with these terms I wouldn't think but um, the concepts really really are, are tough and uh, advanced so uh, to actually apply this stuff is something that uh, if you're going to be doing this, if you're going to be communicating, which I'm imagining most of you are, whether visually or not, you're going to be grappling with this stuff for the rest of your professional life. So let's dive into the fun. So communication is just not as simple as I say something and you hear it. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Um, we want to take a look at what happens when a person attempts to articulate a message to another person. What happens when the audience hears it? What effect does the medium have? So we're going to have a couple of terms that we're going to learn about for uh, this unit and the first one is message and like I said these terms in and of themselves they're really quite easy. We know what a message is. It's um, according to this course, Arts 102, it's any signal or combination of signals that serves as a stimulus for the receiver. And very obvious stuff, you know, the words that I'm saying right now, that's a message. The channel is the vehicle or medium through which the signals are sent or through which the message is sent. So in our case the channel right now is the internet or if you want to be more specific it's YouTube so um, I'm using YouTube to put my message into your ears and eyes and that's how channel works noise is anything that interferes with a person's receiving of a message like this that's noise now noise can be visual noise as well as audible noise. So the word noise has a wider meaning. Anything that interferes with the person's receiving of a message as the source intended to the message to be received. Um, this is a technical problem. So from sender to receiver this is the least difficult part of the of the communication concept. It's the medium or in other words the channel. It has an effect on the intended message and it is often controllable. Any errors that occur in the medium tend to impede, uh, sorry, any errors that occur to the medium to impede the message are generally fixable. So that's the easy part I'm speaking relatively here. That's not necessarily, <laughs> it's kind of easier said than done, but it's doable. The hard part occurs at either end of the channel. So the source of a message any person or thing that creates messages. That's a source also referred to as sender sometimes. Some amount of the sender's psychology will necessarily be present in any communication whether it be visual or spoken. In many cases the sender consciously or not is actually encouraging the receiver to subscribe to his or her value system and or ideology. This is referred to as ideological positioning and implies all kinds of advanced stuff. There are entire college classes on this concept alone and like I said artists grapple their entire they spend their entire career grappling with this effect. And really not just artists. Um, if you want to apply these communication concepts um, beyond the world of visual communication they they certainly apply to verbal communication as well. So it gets real interesting. Receiver is obviously any person that receives messages and it might also be referred to as viewer or listener um, stuff like that. Some interpretation will always occur when a message is re received that's not to be confused with noise in other words it's not a technical problem it's not it's not that there's noise scrambling your message it's um, it's just that the receivers brain is interpreting it um, communication can be interpreted vastly different than the sender intended and therefore clarity is paramount. Avoiding decorations, distractions, and cliches will aid in clarifying the message. Many works of art are deliberately left open to interpretation. When the artists intend their receivers to bring their ideologi 
excuse me, ideologies and philosophies into a given piece, they will do this and leave it open to interpretation like this. Um, so in other works of art, um, on the other end of the spectrum, particularly those created in the minimalist movement of the 1960s, those are very carefully left unopened to interpretation. These artists did not want to allow any hint of viewer psychology to color their message. The only thing you can reasonably call most minimalist work is green acrylic or white wooden sticks and so on. So that brings us to our uh, next term, which is encoding, and that's the process of putting a message into a code. For example, translating nerve impulses into speech sounds. So the sender does this. This is something happening inside my brain right now. I am um, translating my, my brain impulses into um, audible sounds that I'm articulating with my mouth. So, in other words, I'm talking. That's encoding. So, the, when I say the word tree, that's not a tree. It just puts the image of a tree in your mind. Decoding is just what happens on the other end, the process of converting an encoded message, for example, the sound of speech into thought. So the receiver does this. So sender encodes and receiver decodes. The encoding message can be controlled beg your pardon, the encoding process can be controlled and using symbolism that is free from cliche will help maximize the receiver's clear understanding of your message um, and also free from distractions, free from decorations. The decoding process cannot be controlled because it's happening outside of you. All of a person's positive and negative associations with your choice of symbols or words will color how the receiver interprets your message. So, fun stuff.